Well, they never make it easy, and they always keep it interesting, but now the Pittsburgh Penguins are in a playoff spot. You're locked on Penguins. Your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back, Penguins fans, to another edition of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Patrick Damp. You can follow me on Twitter at synonym for wet Joined, as always, by the one and only Hunter Hodes. You can follow him on Twitter at Hunter Hodes. You can follow our show's account at LO underscore Penguins. And we thank you for making this your first listener watch of the day because we're your team every day. And before we get started, today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. So here we are after an absolutely wild back and forth game that ultimately is won in overtime six to five by the Pittsburgh Penguins. They finish off Thursday night going into Friday morning in playoff position they now hold the second wild card spot after as i said a crazy game against the detroit red wings that saw the penguins cough up multiple leads it had a shorthanded goal and if you can believe it with the 20 23 24 pittsburgh penguins an overtime victory and we had everything in this game we had Sidney crosby reaching incredible milestones We had a Jeff Carter shorthanded goal. We had Eric Carlson look like he was going to throw the whole game and possibly the season away to saving it in overtime. And I am glad I wasn't wearing my Apple watch during this game because I'm willing to bet I would have gotten the notification that said, hey, your heart rate's been a little bit elevated for these last few minutes. Is everything okay? Because no Apple Watch, it was not. I was watching the 2023-2024 Pittsburgh Penguins fight for their playoff lives, and that raises just about anybody's anybody's blood pressure. So, Hunter, just go ahead and cook for this one because this game had so much. It's going to be hard to pinpoint where to start for this because if that game didn't sum up the 2023-2024 Pittsburgh Penguins in a nutshell, then what other game has? I mean, this one had everything. Sidney Crosby being an absolute force once again. You had the big guns carrying the load. You even had Jeff Carter, of all people, scoring a massive goal for the Penguins. You had crazy goaltending in this game. You had a power play that didn't do anything for the Penguins, at least. You had a another third-period blown lead just because that's happened so often this season. The one thing that actually did surprise me about this one was the Penguins winning this game in overtime. Heading into this overtime, I was not confident at all just because the Penguins have lost 9 of 12 games decided in just overtime. I'm not counting games that were decided in shootouts when I bring up that stat. They were 3 and 9 just in overtime this season and this goal was the biggest one yet. They're now 4 and 9 in overtime thanks to Eric Carlson having the most Eric Carlson game of all time flawless through two periods he's been playing some of the best hockey i should say the best hockey of his penguins tenure then he barfs all over himself in the third period i have no idea what he's doing chasing lucas raymond behind the net and then he pinches at an awful time which leads to the tying goal from the detroit red wings but then he does what all great players do when they screw up he redeems himself and gets the Penguins' biggest goal of this season yet. Again, this game had everything, and somehow, some way, the Pittsburgh Penguins will wake up on Friday in a playoff spot and control their own destiny heading into their final three games of the season. Yeah, let's start there with Eric Carlson. I think that's a really good spot to to kick this off with, is the fact that you watch the way he played the first two periods, and it was brilliant. He was very good defensively he was helping drive offense he was getting shots at the net he was making the kind of passes that only eric carlson and some a few others can make 
And then you get to that third period and he picked two of the absolute worst times to make a bad decision. You brought up the pinch that led to the tying goal. No need for a pinch there. You're up a goal with less than 10 minutes to go in regulation. No need to press the issue there. Obviously, you don't want to go into a shell, but you don't want to play reckless either, and that was pretty much a reckless play. If we were in a tie game or they were down a goal, you take that risk all day long. But up a goal, got to play smart, got to play responsible hockey, and that is not that. And then on the other goal where he goes behind the net and and leaves Larkin wide open in front, I mean, that's day one stuff. That's not some sort of a risk-reward kind of play. He just leaves Dylan Larkin, who is one of the better players in the National Hockey League. He's no slouch, wide open in front, and you give a player like him that much time, as he did, he's not going to miss there. So you have that. And then there's the other defenseman that we have to talk about, and that's Chris Letang. He is mired in some kind of a slump right now because he is just not playing good hockey. Right. I mean, I know he had the goal to redeem himself after that really bad pass at the end of the first period. I really don't know why he made that pass. Drew O'Connor really wasn't ready for it to begin with. He should have just given it to P.O. Joseph, who was ready on the left side, and he could have taken that puck and tried to hit Drew O'Connor's stick dump the puck in the Red Wing zone, and then you finish off the first period and you take the lead into the second. I think Latang was just trying to be too aggressive in that situation. Yes, he does redeem himself, but even after that, he was coughing up the puck too much in his own zone. We like to say this a lot on our show. Yes, when someone plays well, we shout them out, but we have to be fair and be objective. And Latang has been not good for the past month. And it does need to change heading into the final three games if the Penguins want to pull this off and sneak their way into the playoffs. Absolutely. And I will say this, and I know it's going to come off as kind of some Chris Letang uh, apologista here, but we hold him to such a high standard and rightfully so because he has such an incredible body of work that you expect him to play to that level. And he's not playing to that level because you look at his overall game tonight and obviously those big mistakes stand out as well. They should. And that's been the story of his entire career. When he makes a mistake, he doesn't just make a mistake. He makes the big mistake, but you look at his overall game tonight and it was bad, but he only made a handful of really crucial mistakes Overall, his game was fine, but his game can't just be fine. The type of player he is with the role he has, he has to be great. And speaking of great, Sidney Crosby, man, just uh, I'll talk about the milestones here in a second. Let's turn out the positivity now. We got the negativity out of the way with Carlson and Latang having some bad performances, though they did redeem themselves, especially Carlson in overtime. But let's get into all the positivity with this team with Sid. But but before I get to the milestones, I mean, what a performance again by him. Just he is, I don't want to say single-handedly because he's getting a lot of help as of late. This team has been playing a very good brand of hockey. They're 7-0-3 and in their last 10, and he's been getting help from his line mates. He's been getting help from the defense, help from Alex Nadelkovich. But the way he is playing, this is the type of performance you see from an all-time great. Because I have been saying this all season, the greats, yeah, they get their points, they get their goals, they have their moments, they have their highlights, but they drag their team into the fight. And for the last month, he has been dragging this team into the fight night in and night out. Sid lives for these types of games with everything on the line. You know that he is going to be your best player and he was exactly that in this game. Congratulations to him. Top 10 all time and NHL scoring only the 14th player in NHL history to reach a thousand assists. Again, he's a top five player in the sport and will be forever, but you could tell this was going to be a vintage Crosby game from the opening shift of the game. He created a scoring chance within seconds of this game starting. He was tremendous all night long. The way he cooked that Red Wings player behind the net to set up that Drew O'Connor goal was a sight to behold. I just knew that this was coming right after the opening shift. And it's just been awesome seeing him do this 
not even for just the last uh, several weeks, but for the entire season overall. Yeah, it's it's an absolute treat to behold. And I think before we had to break here, I think my biggest or my most impressive play that he made was actually off of the opening face off of overtime. He gets kicked out of the face off and Brian Rust has to go and take the face off. And what does Sidney Crosby notice? He notices the way Dylan Larkin is holding his stick in the center in the center circle and sees, OK, he is going to try to win the draw back to his defenseman. So as soon as that puck drops, he assumes Brian Rust is going to lose it, which is a fair assumption because Dylan Larkin was cooking in the faceoff circle tonight. He was tremendous in the faceoff circle. So he makes a break right for the puck and gets the Penguins possession right off of the faceoff. And that made the difference because outside of one two on one rush, the Penguins had the puck all of three on three overtime, something that we have not been able to say about their game in overtime this year. But Hunter and I will talk more about this massive win against the Detroit Red Wings and the playoff picture as it unfolds at this point. But before we do that, we have to tell you about our first sponsor, and that is Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts and is on hand to help talk you through it. You can talk to a team of award winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Your work, your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from a lic licensed expert and support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. All right, we're back here on the Friday recap edition of Victory Friday here for the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm Patrick Damp. That's Hunter Hodes. And boy, we we left off talking about Sidney Crosby. We left off talking about how great he was tonight. And unfortunately, though, we're going to have take it back into a little bit of a negative despite a win i do think now with the outlook of the season in the three games remaining i think it's tristan jari time once we get to saturday against the bruins we are going to preview that game here in the third segment but just not his best game and i know that there were a lot of defensive breakdowns this wasn't exactly a highlight real game for the penguins defensive zone coverage but he makes 25 saves on 30 shots 833 save percentage i wouldn't put all of the goals against on him but you would like a save or two on a couple of them i think the tying goal from raymond that's probably the one that Nadelkovich would want back and yeah i know it's a breakaway but i still think he's probably gonna want that one back Overall, you're right. A lot of these goals came because of defensive breakdowns. I also think he may want the Jeff Petrie goal back as well, but that's 10 straight starts for this point with Alex Nedeljkovic. And I know everything is on the line, but I, I think you are going to have to give Jari a start in one of these final three games. I don't think it's going to be on the island against the Islanders, but it has to be in one of these next two home games against the Bruins or against the Predators. I keep saying I think it's going to be the Predators, but if Sullivan were to decide to start Jari on Saturday against Boston, I wouldn't be surprised at all just because I think Ned is running out of gas just a little bit, and you got to give him some breathing room heading into the playoffs, where I do think he would be their starting goaltender if this, if this team makes it. Yeah, for sure. And then we look at Saturday's schedule, and it's going to be another huge night for both the Penguins and as we were doing to uh, on, on Thursday night, scoreboard watching, because right now the Penguins hold the second wild card spot with 86 points, but right behind them are the Capitals, Red Wings, and Flyers again. 
all with 85 points. And then we look at Saturday night's lineups uh, outside of the Penguins, and you have the Islanders and Rangers going at it. Once again, that's at 1230, so we'll be able to watch that one in its entirety without having to second screen it. And then you continue to look at the rest of the schedule. You also have the Red Wings at the Maple Leafs, and that's another huge game that we're have, we'll have to keep an eye on. And then you have the New Jersey Devils and the Philadelphia Flyers and the Washington Capitals and the Tampa Bay Lightning. So a lot of favorable matchups again for the Penguins because you look at that and you hope that the Rangers can find their stride, although they're, they're mired in a tough slump right now, at least in the fact that they have not scored at even strength, I think, in two straight games it's been a long time since they've scored at five on five so they're struggling flyers broke out of their eight game losing streak on thursday night but they're going to go up against a young fast hungry devils team so that'll be an interesting one to watch tampa bay obviously has been tampa bay again so you got them playing the caps so we'll see what happens there toronto austin matthews is two goals away from 70 so I have a feeling they're going to come out guns a blazing against the Red Wings. So interesting slate of games on Saturday. For sure. And it would be great for the Penguins if they were to get some help from some of these teams that need to lose. But the Penguins can only control what's in front of them. They control their own destiny right now. You win these final three games against three pretty solid teams. You are in the playoffs. Doesn't matter if you're third in the Metro or if you get that second wildcard spot, you are in the playoffs no matter what. But going back to this game as a whole, I wanted to shout out a couple more players who I thought played brilliant games, starting with Brian Rust. You know what that goal reminded me of? 2016 Game 7, Andre Vasilevsky. He comes in the offensive zone and fires an absolute rocket past Vasilevsky. He did the same thing here against Alex Lyon. I'm like, hmm. That goal definitely looked familiar, even though it's been eight years since that happened. And I also want to shout out your man, Jeff Carter. Massive goal for the Penguins in the third period. I know they ended up blowing the lead a few minutes later, but he got the team a pretty rare shorthanded goal. They, this team does not score many shorthanded goals this season. And that was one heck of a shot by Carter coming in. I know you were smiling like a butcher's dog, as Mike Lang liked to say, when that goal went in. So I did want to shout out both of those players for two pretty solid performances in this game. Well, good good little bit of trivia here from the Penguins' premier historian, Bob Grove. That was the Penguins' first shorthanded goal in, I think, about a month. And you know who got the last one? I'm blanking on it. Jeff Carter. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then, and then, you know, obviously putting that aside, you know, joking aside was a huge goal, but I, I agree on the Brian Russ thing. I said it during the game on Twitter. That is a guy you hold on to. I know the aging curve is real. I know he's 31 years old, but you look at the way he plays the game. He scores goals. You can put him on literally any line first, second, third, fourth. You can play him on the PK, which he was brilliant on tonight by the way he was maybe the penguins best penalty killer and you can put him on the power play as well i know that he's 31 years old i know that he is eventually going to burn out but that is a guy you hold on to and run him until the wheels fall off because that's just a guy that you win with i agree 100 percent. i mean you could probably get a good haul for him over the offseason but I'm really not looking to move him right now with the way he's played his tail off every single night this season. Could that change next year? Sure, but I'm banking on him having a pretty solid year next year as well. A couple other players I wanted to shout out before we get to the final segment. I think Ricard Raquel is playing the best hockey of his season over the last couple of weeks. The pass that he had on Chris Letang's goal in this one was really nice. He picked up a couple of assists overall. I'm just really liking where his game is at. And I liked how Michael Bunting played yet again. And I should shout out Ryan Shea. I tweeted this during the game. He just looks so comfortable back there right now. It looked a bit much earlier on the season. It looked like he just didn't really know that he was playing at the NHL level. But now that he has some more games under his belt, his stint over these last several games it looks like he's a seasoned veteran playing on the bottom pairing. That pair with St. Ivany has been a really strong pairing 
over the last few games. I would not touch that at all for the final three games. And I would say St. Ivany had a pretty sound game as well. I just like how Ryan Shea is playing really strong in his own zone. He's great at getting the puck out of his own zone and also has a really active stick. I wasn't noticing any of that during his first stint this season. It's been nice to see him improve now that he's getting some more games under his belt. Yeah, Ryan Shea, along with Jack St. Ivany, have been, I don't want to say very impressive because they are two defensive defensemen. They're not going to wow you with anything they do, but they have been perfectly solid. They have played very stable hockey, and that's really what you need from your third pairing. So I have no complaints with them, and I think I'm right there with you. Should this team make the playoffs, don't touch that that pairing let them play i know they're young i know they're inexperienced but the way they have played in the biggest moments in the last couple of weeks i think they've proven they deserve a spot should this team get into the stanley cup playoffs but we still have a ways to go before we get there including a saturday night primetime matchup with the big bad boston bruins hunter and i are going to preview that game right after this and now we're going to tell you about our next sponsor, and that is Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. I've told you guys before, I'm a big fan of Indeed. I had to use it when I was on the job, job hunt a few years ago. It got me matched up with plenty of employers, got me plenty of interviews, and even set me up with my current job. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application. Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire. You need Indeed. And we're going to keep it going here with our next sponsor, and that is Factor Meals. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and stay and feel good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. No fuss, no must meal, meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor, simply, simply heat and savor the good stuff. Tailored to your schedule, customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need, and you can pause or reschedule your deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Factor is your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash Locked on NHL 50 and you'll get 50% off your first box and then 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, we're back here on the Victory Friday edition of the Locked On Penguins podcast. I'm Patrick Damp. That's Hunter Hodes. And we're going to transition into the preview Saturday version of the Locked On Penguins podcast because the Penguins got a big old showdown with the Boston Bruins and they've actually had a mixed bag of results against the Bruins this year. They had maybe their gutsiest win of the year back in January against the Bruins where they pulled out a 6-5 win. Fun score. We liked that one tonight. And then they got walloped by the Bruins 5-1 to back in March. And these are two teams right now that are absolutely rolling. The Bruins are 6-4-0 in their last 10. As we said, Penguins are 7-0-3 on a 10-game point streak. But the Bruins... Once again, man, they are the Boston Bruins. The Bruins 
right now are the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. I was hoping heading into this game that the Bruins weren't going to have too much to play for, but they're still playing for two things. A, the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. They have 107 points right now. And B, the Atlantic Division title. They are only one point ahead of the Florida Panthers, but the, the Bruins, excuse me, do have a game in hand on the Panthers. So they're still fighting for both things. So this is still going to be a pretty big game for the Bruins overall, but I want to continue to see that same desperation that I've been seeing from the Penguins over the last 10 games. It all obviously starts with David Poshnak, 47 goals, 107 points in 79 games. I would say outside of Austin Matthews, I think he's the best goal scorer in the league right now. He is that good with the puck on his stick. Brad Marchand, he's having one heck of a year as well, and he can do it all. Five on five, five on four, four V five. He is just a great all around player on the Bruins. And just when you think this Bruins team is going to slow down, they just keep on winning. Despite having very mid center depth, their four group outside of that is still pretty solid. And then defensively, you have some dudes there, especially with Charlie McAvoy, but their biggest strength this season, in my opinion, is their goaltending. Both Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark have been awesome for the Bruins. In 38 games, Allmark is 21 and 9 and 7, 917 save percentage. Jeremy Swayman, 43 games, he's 25, 9 and 8 with a 915 save percentage. It really doesn't matter which goalie the Bruins start in this one just because both have been two of the best goalies in the league. And now we can hit on something that we kind of hinted at earlier in the show. Alex Nedeljkovic has started 10 straight games for the Penguins. And I know this game against the Bruins is another massive one just because of where the Penguins are. Standings wise, they will hold that playoff spot heading into the games on Saturday. Do you start Tristan Jari in this one or do you wait until Nashville? Because Jari overall against the Predators, I have a couple stats to give you. He's 3-0-2 in five games against Nashville with a 1.97 goals against average and a 9.28 save percentage versus Nashville. I'm kind of inclined to save him for that game and maybe ride Nedeljkovic for an 11th straight game, even though he could be gassed. But that said, if Sullivan does go to Jari in this game, even though Jari has kind of mixed numbers against the Bruins, I wouldn't be surprised. But where do you stand on that? Hear me out on this. I think it's Alex Nedeljkovic's net. If this team gets to the postseason, I think he's earned that. I think you can give Jari two straight starts here. I think you can rest up Alex Nadelkovic and get him going into what is probably going to be a consequential game in Long Island against the Islanders. And at this point, you could see it tonight. Ned's slowing down a little bit. He is struggling a little bit. Yes, a lot of the goals against the Red Wings were not his fault. But a couple of them, you could probably say, hey, let's get a save there. And he, he has started, what is it, 10 straight? Yes. 10 straight. I, I think he's a good goalie. He didn't play all that much leading up to this current 10 start, 10 start stretch. But even a good goalie, even the best goalies in this modern era can't handle that kind of workload. They just can't. The game's different now especially this season with scoring and offense through the roof, they're under assault every single game. And on the flip side of it, you've rested Jari for 10 games. And it's not like when you rest as a goalie, you just sit on the bench for everything. He's in practice every day. He's getting work every day. He's getting extended work in the morning skates when he's not starting. And by all, by all accounts, we hear about this guy. He's a fierce competitor. He works hard. And he still is talented. I know he struggled the last month, uh, especially when he was getting consistent starts, but now he's got a chance to go out and prove himself. And at this point, I know that everybody's wincing at this and thinking, oh, no, you can't do it. Jari stinks. Jari stinks. You have to play this correctly because, yes, you're trying to get into the postseason, but if you go into the postseason with an ice-cold Tristan Jari and a burnt-out Alex Nadelkovic, it doesn't matter who you play because you're probably not going to get many saves. See, I agree with you on that. I don't want Adelkovich to be gassed heading into the playoffs if they get in, but it just carries so much risk starting Jari two straight games with the level that he's played at over the last month. I mean, this would kind of be a redemption chance for Jari as this team is trying to make the playoffs, but 
with how he's played over the last couple of weeks. I know he's been off for the last couple of weeks overall. I just don't know if you can start him two straight games with everything on the line. I'm there to start him in one of those games, especially against Nashville. But that Bruins game, that scares me, especially with the talent that they have up front. I don't know, man. It's it's still going to be really risky if you start him in that game again. I won't be surprised, but with the numbers that he has against the Predators, I would save him for that game personally. And just with how Nashville doesn't has have excuse me as much star talent, I just think it makes more sense to put him in that game because the Bruins game right now it still means more. It does, but I mean, at this point, I think you really have to just go out and just play the way you've been playing. I mean, if you're relying simply on your goaltending, then you've already lost. So you have to go out and play the Bruins with the same desperation you have been playing with for the last three weeks. And if you're Tristan Jari, you want to show these guys, hey, I still got it. And either way, I'm going to start them on Saturday night. I have to. It, Ned is starting to slow up a little bit. You can't burn him out. And hell, if Jari plays well Saturday night, start him again on Monday. And then you just say, you know what? We're in a Metro division showdown here in the last game of the season. And this could maybe get us into third in the division. We're going with the guy who has brought us back from the dead and Alex and Delkovich. Tristan, thanks for the thanks for the help. You'll be back next year, maybe. And if Ned falters, we need you ready. So that's at least where I stand. I hear you. I mean, it's a very valid argument, but you know, Jari, three, six, and three in his career against the Bruins, two of his last three games against Boston overall, sub 900 save percentage. It's just a very high risk potential high award if he if the first half Tristan Jari shows up in this game but I'm just not sure that's going to happen with everything on the line I just I think I get spooked <laughs> after how Jari played in the playoffs a couple of years ago not even just the Rangers he had a broken foot in that game please people I'm not trying to crush him for that I'm just talking about the Islanders I think I'm just a little bit spooked still from that overall but is there anything else you want to say about this game against the Bruins that we really haven't discussed yet Got to play with desperation. That's the main thing because it's a great Bruins team with talent top to bottom and two great goaltenders. So it's a formidable task, even if you're not fighting for your playoff lives. Got to play desperate. Got to play smart. And you got to just feed off the energy in the building because Bruins and Penguins, 8 o'clock p.m. at PPG Paints Arena. And I do think that will do it for this episode of the Locked On Penguins podcast. Thank you always for tuning in hunter and i will be back on monday to recap the bruins game and get you ready for the nashville predators game but until then the penguins currently hold a playoff spot so enjoy that for a few a couple of days here enjoy this run embrace it have some fun and we will talk to you on monday